Are you struggling to get your first cloud architect job or your first solution architect job? Are people not coming to you? Well, you're probably making one of the most common cloud architect resume mistakes. In this video, we're going to teach you the most common cloud architect resume mistakes and how to avoid them so you can get your first cloud architect or solution architect job. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs, and I am the founder and CEO of Go Cloud Careers, and we're an organization that's dedicated towards building cloud architect and cloud engineer careers. Personally, I've been working as an architect now for about 25 years, and I've been helping others get their first tech job or get promoted in tech now for more than two decades, and I want to help you get cloud hired or cloud promoted. In today's video, we're going to spend some time talking about the major cloud architect resume mistakes or solution architect resume mistakes. If recruiters aren't knocking at your door all day, every day, asking you to work for them, you need to tune that cloud architect resume or solution architect resume. Before we talk about how to avoid these seven most common cloud architect resume mistakes, I want to define what is a cloud architect and what do we do? And then when we explain these common resume mistakes, it's going to make sense to you. The first thing that we need to talk about is the cloud architect or the solution architect is a very specialist position. This is a position that's 50% executive and 50% technology professional. And it's a very rare skill set to find in the same person. As cloud architects, we are digital transformation specialists, meaning our whole point and our whole purpose is to help customers improve their business by designing technology systems that will improve their business performance. So because of that, our role is very specialized. As a cloud architect, my job starts by interviewing the executives at the company, asking them about their business, their business goals, their business pain points, and their business challenges. From there, I ask members of the team, what's going on in your business? I ask department heads. From there, I then ask the technology people, what kind of systems do you have? How are they working for you? I then bring in a team of cloud engineers to baseline the company's technology systems. And I go back to my company. I build a team of engineers and architects, and together we design a solution. I write up the solution in terms of an executive document, a management document, and a technology document for the engineering team. I present it back to the customer I negotiate the business deals with the account teams and then I sell it to the customer. And at that point, I am completely done. The project gets handed on to a build team and it gets built. So when we're dealing with cloud architects or solution architects, we have to make sure that the resume conveys this. Now, you don't just have to take my word for it. You can see in CIO Magazine, when the CIOs are actually telling you, this is what we want in a cloud architect. Unfortunately, we find people at training for cloud engineering skills, which is the most common cloud architect career mistake. But in this video, we're gonna talk about resume mistakes, but let's tell you what's published in CIO Magazine. So you know exactly from somebody other than me, what is a cloud architect and their skills. Here's what happened. Many people like me and other architects I know and other business leaders in technology started looking at some of these cloud architect job descriptions that were clearly cut and paste descriptions of cloud engineering jobs written by HR teams who had no idea what is a cloud architect. And what would happen is people would put all this stuff on the resume, they'd go through HR, HR would send them to the hiring managers, and we couldn't hire any of them, none of them at all. So we'd end up going to a recruiter and then bypassing HR by telling the recruiter this is exactly what I want. And what happened is so many people all over the globe started looking at this the Gartner, an organization that really evaluates technology. Want to know who's got the most innovative cloud? Ask Gartner. Best router? Ask Gartner. Best firewall? Ask Gartner. That's all they do is they look at this. And they too looked at these cloud architect and solution architect job descriptions and they went, what is this? So they went and asked the chief information officers of companies, what do you want in your cloud architects? And it was published in CIO Magazine. We'll pop a link to that in this video and in the description below. And here's what the management, the CIOs, our bosses told us. They said the three main responsibilities of a cloud architect are to lead the cultural change for cloud adoption, develop and coordinate a cloud architecture, and develop a cloud strategy and coordinate the adoption process. And then 
When they were asked, what do you want your cloud architects to do every day? They say, help find talent with the necessary skills, assess applications, software, and hardware, create a cloud broker team, establish best practices for the cloud across the company, selecting cloud providers and vetting third-party services, overseeing governance and mitigating risk, working with the IT security people to monitor privacy and develop incident response procedures, manage budgets and estimate costs, and operate at scale. Note, what did you not hear at all? No coding, no configuring, or no touching of the technology whatsoever. So now let's talk about the biggest solution architect career mistakes are cloud architect resume mistakes, because we see these resume mistakes and they will keep recruiters from reaching out to you. And we want you all getting cloud hired. The first mistake we see commonly on resumes is someone puts down cloud architect slash cloud engineer. Now this, when this is on the resume, makes it clear we can't hire you. And here's the reason. If you have cloud architect slash cloud engineer, it shows you don't know the difference. Here's what happens. We cloud architects design the solution and the cloud engineers build the solution. Kind of like the way the doctor writes the prescription or writes the orders at the hospital and the nurse takes care of the patients at the hospital or the pilot flies the airplane and the flight attendant keeps people safely in their seats. You can't do two jobs at once. So either your resume has to reflect cloud architect or cloud engineer, but never both. Now, the next mistake we see, and we really hate to see this mistake because people work so hard and they end up making this mistake. It's having a bunch of unrelated certifications on your resume. See, your resume should show that you are the expert in your field that they need you on their team. So imagine this, you wanted to hire an airplane pilot and you had a choice of two pilots. Pilot one was in the Navy and fly airplanes their entire life and they've got 40 years experience. Pilot two was an artist, a musician, a doctor, a nurse, and now they're a pilot. Well, one shows that they're everything other than a pilot and the other shows that the person's experienced pilot. Same thing with architects. Now, architecture certifications, there's really not any certifications other than the Cisco Certified Design Expert that are truly architect related. Sure, there's a TOGAF, which is a little bit architect related, and we've got the AWS Certified Solution Architect Professional, which is the name of a service and how to configure that service. Oh wait, we don't configure that service. So most certifications are not really architecture ones, but they're still good ones. We still want that AWS Certified Solution Architect Professional or that Azure Solution Architect Expert because it still builds the brand of an architect. But there are some really bad certifications that show that you're not an architect that make you look like an engineer. These ones are the AWS SysOps, the AWS DevOps, and the AWS Cloud Developer, and the equivalent on all the other cloud providers. And here's the reason. We are not maintenance people like SysOps people. They're maintenance people. We are systems designers. And looking like a maintenance person does not make you look like a systems designer. A DevOps cert certification is someone that automates software release cycles. Guess what? We don't automate anything. We design, present, and sell. And a cloud developer shows you're a software engineer. And guess what? We don't code and we're not software engineers. So having this on your resume shows you're a cloud engineer, which if you want to be a cloud engineer and that's a great job, they're fantastic. But we are cloud architects. We design, present and sell. And the more things that are not architecture related in your certification, the less you look like an architect. So make sure if you have these certifications, you remove them for your resume. I'll give you lots of examples. I had someone that I worked with for a while. He went and said, I can't get an interview. No one's willing to hire me. And he had a great background and he had the SysOps, the DevOps certification, and all this coding on his resume. And I said to him, he was one of my students, he was well-trained and very capable. I said, can I cut off these certifications on your resume? He was like, Mike, I really want them. I worked hard for them. I said, I know you worked hard for them, but they're showing you're not an architect. I said, do you want the job or do you want the certifications? He said, Mike, I want the job. I removed these certifications and within a week, he had three offers. He went on interviews, they loved him, maybe that's two weeks actually, but he had three offers. The point being is if your resume shows you're everything other than your skill, no one will hire you and no one will interview you. Now, here's another carryover from engineering resumes. In engineering resumes, it's extremely common to have a skill section. And in the skills section, list everything you know, every programming language you know, all the acronyms, 
BGP, OSPF, EBS, S3, EFS, etc., etc., etc. Here's the problem. They are not cloud architect or solution architect skills. They are engineering skills. We design technology to solve customer problems. And therefore, it's not that we're hands-on with these things. In fact, in our world, it's much criti more critical to know what is block storage and all the idiosyncrasies of block storage than any vendor-specific implementation, especially because most everything we do is multi-cloud anyway. We need to know how things work, not how to configure them. And there, there's a big difference there. We need extreme detail in how things work so we can design it and performance tune it through our design process but we don't do the hands-on configuration. So keep it at that. You list these things on there, it'll show you you're an engineer, which will get you engineering calls. And if that's your goal, that's great. But if your goal is to be a cloud architect or a solution architect, having these acronyms and buzzwords shows you're not an architect. And again, it makes it harder. Now recently, and I don't know why recently, I'm seeing a bunch of Git projects that are on cloud architect resumes. First, cloud architects don't work with Git. So putting these things on your resume shows that you are a cloud engineer or a cloud admin and not an architect. And it's killing people's brands, so I wanna make sure that it's not on your resume. Now, there are things, and we'll talk about the technology you've done that should be on your resume, but not yet. The next thing is having a bunch of jargon. We architects communicate at the CXO level. We meet with CEOs, CFOs, CTOs, CIOs, etc etc we are executives ourselves and i can't talk to the ceo about his ebs and his efs if i do it'll be a short meeting the ceo will escort me out of the meeting the ceo will call my manager i will be fired and my replacement replacement will thank me for the new job so if you have jargon on your resume it's showing you're not ready to design present and sell so get it off and use simple, plain communications and language. Now the next one, here's the tricky part. We find people like to list the tech projects they've done. Coded website in Java. Coded this in this language. Coded this in this language. The problem with that is as follows. It shows you're a techie and not a digital transformation specialist, which again is gonna keep you from getting these interviews. And it's definitely gonna keep you from getting hired. Now, listing the technology you've worked with is absolutely critical, but here's the difference. Instead of a techie saying, I've coded this website with Java or whatever, instead, architected new website that increased sales by 11%. Or something that says, deployed new communications and collaboration platforms that improved employee productivity by 6%. Now you're showing digital transformation, and that's what we do. So talk about the impact of your technology. That's what we architects do. Somebody meets with me, and they tell me about their business, and I design a billion-dollar architecture. It's to deliver two and three and four billion dollars of business value for that business. That's why they call an architect to design a system to improve their business performance. They don't care if I can code it because that's somebody else's job, but they do care that I know how to ask the executives about their business, read a financial statement, read a balance sheet, see what industry analysts are doing, look at what their competitors are doing and coming up with a solution to improve that business's performance. So list the impact of the technology projects you've worked on, and then you'll have the world coming to you. Now, this is the next one. It's not having business skills on your resume. You must show your business acumen or business knowledge on your resume because it's critical for these jobs. And the reality is architects, we must master presentation skills and executive communication skills. So if you're giving presentations, make sure they're there. It's good to put that you have executive communication skills, but it's going to be hard to see. But here's what you can do. You can use executive writing on your resume. Key points with executive writing, write for readability. Try to write it to a sixth or to an eighth grade level. Even the Wall Street Journal and all major newspapers are written below a ninth grade reading level for a reason. People prefer to read things that are simple. Recruiters are gonna be more apt to read it. Hiring managers are gonna be more apt to read it. So put that, write your resume in business executive communication. Simple, effective, plain language. 
whenever possible use sentences of less than 11 words. Use no jargon and make it simple to read. So today we talked about seven major Cloud Architect resume mistakes. I'll summarize them. Putting down Cloud Architect slash Cloud Engineer because that shows you're not aware of which is which. Having a resume with a bunch of unrelated certifications that shows you're everything other than an architect. Having a skills session that lists a bunch of skills in terms of acronyms. Listing a bunch of Git projects. Having a bunch of jargon on your resume. And only listing the technology and what you've done with the technology on your resume. And the last part is not showing business skills such as executive communication or delivering presentations. This is Michael Gibbs. I've been a cloud architect, network architect, and enterprise architect for the last 25 years. And I've been helping people build their best technology career by getting them their first architect job, their first engineer job for more than two decades. I hope you've enjoyed this video on cloud architect resume mistakes and solution architect resume mistakes. And I look forward to seeing you in another video. Take care, everyone.